This is lesson 6-7, polygons and the coordinate plane. So the first thing we're going to do is go over some formulas. But figures in the coordinate plane can be classified using the formulas for slope, distance, and midpoint. So we can figure out if something is a rhombus or a parallelogram or a rectangle or a square or an isosceles triangle by using the distance, the midpoint, and the slope formula. So we learned these earlier in the year. We're just going to review them. The distance formula, and if you can, see if you can write them down before um, the video shows them. But the distance formula is that square root of x squared my x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So the difference is the square root x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And it actually doesn't matter which x or that you start with, but whatever x you start with, you need to start with the same y. Now we use the distance formula to find the length of something. So you can use it to see if the sides are congruent or if the diagonals are congruent. Okay, so like sides are congruent if I was showing that something was a rhombus because a rhombus has four congruent sides or showing that something's a square or diagonals are congruent, a rectangle has congruent diagonals. So depending on what I'm trying to prove. The midpoint formula is x1 plus x2 over 2 comma y1 plus y2 over 2. So basically I'm adding the x coordinates and I'm dividing by 2 and I'm adding the y coordinates and I'm dividing by 2. Now it doesn't seem that, would, that it would be useful for the midpoint formula but it actually is because remember in a parallelogram those um, the diagonals bisect each other so we can use the midpoint formula to find the coordinates of the midpoint of a side or we can use it to see whether the diagonals bisect each other and that would prove it was a parallelogram. The slope formula, remember m is slope, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So slope is the change in y over the change in x. And we use the slope to see if opposite sides are parallel. So in a parallelogram, opposite sides are parallel. We can use it to show that diagonals are perpendicular, and that's true in a rhombus or a square. Or we can also use it to show sides are perpendicular, because remember a square has four right angles and a rectangle has four right angles, so we can use it for that as well. Okay, so we're going to go through each of these figures. A right triangle, to show something's a right triangle, you need to show there's a right angle. Think about what formula would show something's a right angle, distance, midpoint, or slope. I'd have to do the slope two times to show that those slopes are negative reciprocals, and then therefore there's a right angle there. Okay, isosceles triangle, you think of what an isosceles triangle has two sides congruent. Which formula can show that two sides are congruent? Slope, distance, or midpoint. To show something's the same length, I'm going to use my distance formula, so I'm going to use the distance two times. If I wanted to show, I don't have equilateral triangle here, but if I wanted to show something's equilateral, then I would show that all three sides are congruent. Now parallelogram we learn the properties of a parallelogram. There's different ways to prove something's a parallelogram. Some of them are easier than others, but there's three different ways. I can show the opposite sides are parallel. I can show the opposite sides are congruent to each other. Or I can show the diagonals bisect each other. Okay, so those are three different ways. Sometimes they might tell you to do it a specific way. If they don't, then it's up to you. So now if I want to show the opposite sides are parallel, Parallel means they have the same slope, so I'd have to use my slope formula. If I wanted to show the opposite sides are congruent, I'd have to show they're the same length, I'd have to use my distance formula. And on all these, I'd have to use the slope four times to show that both opposite sides are parallel. If I want to show both opposite sides are congruent, I'd have to use the distance formula four times. Or my last choice is I can just show the diagonals bisect each other, and therefore I'm going to use my midpoint formula twice. But it's the midpoint of the diagonal, so even though this is actually the easiest one, you do have to be careful. Now if I was choosing between slope and distance, I'd much rather do my slope formula four times than do my distance formula four times. So it depends on what you're comfortable with, and we'll practice everything. Okay, so there is a choice in proving something's a parallelogram. The easiest probably is just to show the diagonals bisect each other because all you have to do is the midpoint formula twice. Now a rectangle. A rectangle, remember, has um, opposite sides congruent and parallel, but it also has, it's a parallelogram with one right angle. 
So I can show the opposite sides are parallel and it has one right angle. Or I can show the diagonals bisect each other, which essentially makes it a parallelogram. And then, then on top of that, I need to show the diagonals are congruent because that's what specifically makes it a rectangle. Okay, so if I show the opposite sides are parallel and one right angle, I'm going to be using my slope formula four times. Okay, slope formula four times shows the opposite sides are parallel. And then for one right angle, I need to show that two of those consecutive sides, their slopes are negative reciprocals. If I want to do the diagonal one, I'd have to use the midpoint on the diagonals to show that they bisect each other. And then I have to show that those diagonals are congruent, so I'd have to use the distance formula twice. Okay, remember the distance one is a little bit more involved, but that's a choice. Either way, you're going to do four things. You're either going to do the slope four times, or you're going to do midpoint twice and distance twice. Now a square has four right angles and four congruent sides. So again, I'm going to have a choice on what I can do. I can show all the sides are congruent and there's one right angle. If I was doing that, I'd have to use my distance formula four times and then my slope twice to show the right angle, so that's pretty involved. Or I can show the diagonals bisect each other and are congruent and are perpendicular. Okay, either way, we're actually going to have to do six things. So if I'm showing my sides are congruent and I have one right angle, I'm going to do the distance four times and the slope twice to show the right angle. The distance is to show that all four sides are congruent. If I'm going to work with the diagonals, I have to show that the diagonals bisect each other to make it a parallelogram, so that's midpoint twice. Then I have to use the distance formula twice to show the diagonals are congruent. That basically makes it a rectangle. And then I have to use the slope formula twice on the diagonals to show that my diagonals are perpendicular because that's what makes it a square. Trapezoid, remember, has two sides parallel, two sides not parallel. So I have to show only one pair of opposite sides are parallel. So to do that, I'm going to do use the slope formula four times to show that one pair of opposite sides are parallel. They'll have the same slope. And I have to show the other two sides are not parallel. Isosceles trapezoid, I'm just adding on after I prove it's a trapezoid, so I'm proving that one pair of opposite sides are, con are parallel, I have to show that those two legs are congruent to each other. So I'm going to do the slope four times, but then I have to do the distance twice to show that those um, legs are going to be uh, congruent to each other. And then the last thing I have is rhombus. Rhombus has four sides congruent. So I can show all sides are congruent. I would have to use my distance formula four times. Or I could show the diagonals bisect each other and are perpendicular. So I'm going to use distance four times to show the sides are congruent. Or if I want to work with the diagonals, I use the midpoint twice to show the diagonals bisect each other. That makes it a parallelogram. And then I have to use the slope to show that my diagonals are perpendicular. That makes it a rhombus. Okay, so while we're doing problems for the next two days, we're going to practice this. You'll have this out. Remember that when we're doing this, parallel lines have equal slopes, so the slopes are the same. That'll help us prove it's a parallelogram. Or perpendicular lines have the slopes are negative reciprocals, and again, that would show it was a right angle for things like the square and the rectangle, or if you were talking about the diagonals being perpendicular. Okay, so all you have to do is fill in your summary sheet, and we'll practice these for the next two days.